Hi YouTube. Have you ever wondered how to make a lithopane? Lithopanes are uh, made from photographs that you can 3D print them. Um, so you basically take a photo, you turn it into a 3D model, and then you're with a light behind the image, you'll be able to see the image and it looks like a black and white photo. Why don't I just show you? So I've got my avatar and this is what it is when I've 3D printed it. Now, well, you really don't see much. Maybe you see a few mountains and valleys. All right, but I'm going to get the camera and place it in front of my light. And can you see it now? There we go. Okay, so what's happening is it's shining the light through and you get an image of me. Okay, so in this Mathematica tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. Uh, make, make a lithopane, okay? We'll actually build some a program to do that job. All right, so let me make myself a little bit smaller out of the way. And let's get started. So first I'm going to, now I'll show you my little avatar. I don't know, can you see that here? Possibly not, okay. Look, I'll just import it. So I've got a copy of it that I put in the documents folder. So I'll say P equals import. And I have called this Sam for my name, avatar. And I know that it's a JPEG file, JPG. Okay, shift enter and I'll, there it is, you see? Okay, now we are going to semicolon. Okay, so we don't have to look at that. And next I want to go image data. So I'll say Q equals image data P. All right, let's have a look. That's going to be a really long list and it's not going to show us because it's so long. All right, let's just take the first five elements of this and have a look at the data. Take Q5. All right, so you see this is uh, pixel data, red, green, blue. Now look, what we wanna do is just take the first, say first pixel, the red component. The red component of each of the pixels, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so if we take the red component of each of the pixels, well, how do we do that in Mathematica? We might say R equals Q, and we'll do indexing with the double brackets, double square brackets, and then I'll say all, comma, all, then uh, one to take the first, this one, all right? That's the red component of each pixel. Right, and the square brackets and semicolon put a semicolon on this too okay and then shift enter and that that's into memory now all right so now if you say take r5 well you see what this looks like this is the first five rows of that picture of me okay next uh we want to ask what are the how what are the dimensions of this image all right so m equals length of r and n equals length of the transpose as a matrix so transpose r all right shift enter so this says that there are 228 rows of of pixels and 170 columns of pixels in this image okay so let's put semicolons on those those are now in memory okay the next thing I want to do is build little cuboids all right so these are basically squares whose height is the the quantity of pixel all right so first let's just show you what a cuboid is Copy, paste. Now, rather than J and K, let's just choose a pair of numbers, three, five, three, five. What I want is H, H equals one for the 
the width of the cuboid okay all right so um yeah and I, and and in this position i want the pixel value to be the height of that all right but not quite i've multiplied it by 20 because these numbers are numbers between zero and one okay so if i multiply by 20 i'm amplifying those and then when they're zero i'll just put 1.5 so i don't get something of zero thickness okay so that's what a cuboid looks like uh, in code but how do you visualize it well then you want to write graphics 3d to visualize that cuboid right and now uh there must be some incorrect code oh i see yep that should be three and five okay shift enter all right so here's a cuboid that's just an example of a cuboid now what i want to do is tabulate i want to put back in the j and the k here to talk about the j case arbitrary j case um pixel within that image okay so and then i want to tabulate over the j and the k from from 1 to m and from 1 to n in j and k so let's just show you what i mean all right so i said w equals now table for tabulating I'm letting the J's go from 1 to M, the K's go from 1 to N, all right, and then I'm constructing a collection of cuboids, really, all right, so shift enter, and then that's in memory, and the last thing I want to do is say Z equals graphics 3D of what I've just constructed, and then let's have a look, all right, so it's building this um, 3D model of the photo of myself okay it's done and let's have a look what we see now you can probably already recognize that it's looking like my avatar okay you can see my eyes here my nose my mouth and it's surely three-dimensional all right let's see if we can rotate now when I move this around it's it's quite slow because there's a lot of data in there, right? There's a lot of calculations that went into that, and then I'm asking to view that from another angle. So of course it's going to be slow. Okay, that's almost the last thing I have to show you, except for there's another piece of code for exporting this, all right? So let's just copy this for you, and then paste it in here. So now I go into a new cell to do this because this is already time consuming and then this takes a bit more time to export this. So I export this now as an STL file so that it's suitable for 3D printing. All right, I'm not going to press shift and enter now because well that's just more time. But it will end up in the documents folder uh, or the de default folder uh, Mathematica uses to take things in and out from okay so then i take that and i open this up in my own different 3d printing software now since i have a flash forge dreamer well i use the software that comes with it and that's called flash print but i think flash flash print on its own is free software okay so i've opened it up and now i will show you how that looks like in my 3d printing software flash print okay now all right, so what I want to do is just rotate this around and so you can see the 3D aspects of this. Okay, so yeah, that's how to do that. Now, if you wanted to, so let me first say that this won't, won't print as a lithopane like I showed you with this, right? You actually take the negative value. Uh, so what you want to do is make the dark pixels go the other way okay and the lighter ones uh, go the opposite direction so of course you could probably do that now I don't actually use Mathematica to do lithopane prints I have another software that I found online uh, it was free I'll show you it's just called image to SDL converter I think and it's an XEL file sorry XE 
exe file what i'm trying to say so yeah it's it it's it's easy to use but um what i like about mathematica for doing this is that i can really control uh all aspects of the data right and and um that's reassuring to know that i can do just about anything to it so for example i could add some kind of um wave function to this like I'll just pull up so this is another 3d print that i made which is a sum of waves you probably can't see this very well yeah oh well sum of waves like i could add something else to this data right i could take someone else's photo and and add it to mine and and get a new image right you could have quite a lot of fun in um in getting creative okay so that's all i have for you now oh well maybe i should show you how this software works so i would just select print uh say that i want to do this in pla on the right and then i have more options but if i just go okay it will build the model and i would go save all right and then this this slices this so basically turns this model into something that's suitable for 3d printing and then I could send it over to my actual 3D printer as a .gx file and, and press print. Okay, well, that's all. See you next time. Thanks for watching.